Spiritual Burdens Many of the saints are burdened, have a heavy heart, and feel pressed in their spirits. This is a spiritual operation of the soul and the body. This cannot be explained in words. It can only be experienced by a person who will consistently deny self and obey the leading of the Holy Spirit. A burden is actually a message about a need somewhere in the earth, a message of divine origin, not of our own understanding. Often, when God gives some humble follower a burden, Satan will attack the mind or the nervous system with the accusation, you have failed. But it is just the opposite. God has probably entrusted you with a burden. The need may be anywhere in the earth. For instance, it might be for 1,000 people to be saved in the islands of the sea, or for the healing of a person a block away. The primary burden of the saints of God today is for the professed church on earth. Many times incidents will occur in your life and you will wonder why they have happened. Often God is seeking to instruct you through these circumstances, but Satan will tell you that you don't have the victory, that you have committed sin, that you are not going to make it to heaven. We must resist these thoughts, for he is a liar and the father of all lies. Jesus would never tell us such things. And if thoughts are not of God, we simply must resist them, no matter how reasonable they might appear. When a true follower of Jesus is a recipient of a burden, he may feel heavy-hearted, somewhat nervous, or even upset. The Holy Spirit is attempting to communicate to that heart a need somewhere on the earth and use him as an instrument of intercession in the kingdom of God. But Satan is also there to buffet, hurt, and accuse. We can be alerted to Satan's voice by the fact that he tends to accuse us in the mind bringing a number of failings or shortcomings to our attention at once in order to cause confusion. On the other hand, Jesus speaks gently and lovingly to the heart, focusing our thoughts on a single place where we have failed in order that we may ask forgiveness and not do that certain thing again. The body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. If you are completely yielded, the Holy Spirit possesses all of you. The body is like a piano or a typewriter. God can say many things through it if you will only be yielded to His hand. God desires to teach us if we are willing to wait. As we obey the Holy Spirit moment by moment, day after day, He brings us gradually into the place of understanding we do not study to learn these mysteries of God. They are not wrested from their hiding place by intellect or by human insight. These mysteries are revealed unto babes. As Jesus tells us in Matthew 11:25. I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and the prudent, and hast revealed them unto babes. Spiritual secrets are given unto those who fear God, the meek and lowly of heart, the childlike in spirit, the self-denied pilgrim. They can only be trusted to the crucified heart, for only the heart dead to the earth and its goals will give back to God all the glory. Only the broken and contrite spirit will permit God to use these gifts and revelations as He sees fit and at His own time. Don't become discouraged if you do not understand all that God is doing with you. I had to walk with God for years before I knew what a burden was. Then I continued to walk with Him for more years in order to be taught how to locate my burden. One is taught these lessons best as he humbly obeys each leading of the Holy Spirit and remains childlike in his heart. 
It has often been my experience that when I say amen as I finish prayer, the Lord reveals to me to pray on. This is when real prayer begins, for the Holy Spirit prays through me then, revealing burdens in the church, in nations, in bodies, in the earth. The Lord will possibly burden you for some need in the future. Always be thankful for that. The more appreciative you are, the more He may lead you. I believe that God leads in proportion to our delight and our trust in Him. People become so excited about new clothes, new homes, and new cars. But I am more delighted over the leading of the Holy Spirit and the things of God's kingdom. Often our lack of praise prevents us from receiving something we have long desired. But if you truly revel in the things of God, He will give you the desires of your heart. It is only as He leads and directs us day by day that we can truly be used in His kingdom work. All our attempts at spiritual endeavors are still strivings in the flesh. And Paul tells us very clearly in Romans 8.8 8, that they that are in the flesh cannot please God. It is imperative that we be instructed how the Holy Spirit leads, how He checks us, and how He talks to us about needs throughout the earth. God wants to lead all of His children he wishes to teach us the movings of His Spirit, to reveal the various ways He leads and directs, helps and instructs. And He can do this only as we wait upon Him, as we deny self second by second, and as we press to the cross joyfully in consistent obedience. The question naturally arises, how do I recognize a burden? First of all, we do not seek a burden. We do not strive to be used by God in specific patterns or in special ways. I have never endeavored to be led. I have merely sought to love God and worship Him. As I waited in His presence, He began to slay out of me hindrances in my nature. These had to be crucified in order that there would be no earthly intrusion of the mortal mind to prevent God's will and His revelation. Do not strive to be led. Simply wait on the Lord and let Him refine you. If we begin to seek for something, we may get a result, but it well might not be of God. Our assignment is to simply trust God, obey continually, praise Him often, and love Him for His sake alone. Do not seek any specific type of experience. Strive only to be filled with His love for all persons. He will send to you what you need at His own time. Secondly, do not try to look for burdens or situations which need prayer. We are not to look for troubles, problems, faults, or difficulties, for we will quickly discover much more than we could possibly handle. We are to think only on things true, honest, just, pure, lovely, and of good report, Philippians 4.8. Be consistent in reading the Word, in talking with God, in witnessing and humbly obeying the Holy Spirit. Fill your life with much praise, and God will reveal to your heart the burdens for which He wishes you to pray. If any problems of loved ones, friends, or persons of your acquaintance attract your attention, do not dwell on them. Simply lift the need immediately to God and leave it there. Neither brood over situations nor mull over them in your mind. Let Jesus carry the load, for you will not be able to bear the griefs and sorrows of even one little village, let alone the world. Now this is what you want to do all the time. Don't place your attention on any difficulties at any time. Look only to Jesus through every circumstance. Keep your eyes fixed upon Him constantly. Maintain praise and adoration in your heart, even when you don't feel like it, when it is not easy to praise. 
We will never be able to work out a single situation ourselves anyway. Leave the working out to God and simply keep your eyes on Jesus, who is the answer to every need and every problem. Thirdly, you may recognize that Jesus has entrusted you with a burden when you feel pressed down for no certain reason. Satan may attempt to tell you that you have sinned or backslidden, but you are to resist him. Search your soul and ask God to bring to mind any place where you might have fallen short of his will. Ask him to forgive and cleanse from your heart anything that might have grieved or hurt him. If the heaviness does not lift from your heart and the joy of Jesus is not within your soul as you once experienced it, it could be that the Holy Spirit has entrusted you with a burden. This operation of the Spirit might be for any number of needs around the earth. We can know what the spiritual operation means only by the witness of the Holy Spirit. Many persons are striving to learn the secret of intercession by reading books on prayer or attending prayer retreats. These activities are fine, but the fact is that we can agonize and labor in prayer for months and not once prevail with God. The key to actual prevailing prayer is praying the exact petition which God desires. It is as we wait upon God in adoration and praise that He can more quickly lead us to that petition, which it is His will that we make. Do not become confused by trying to locate the burden exactly. Lift the need by saying, Jesus, here is the burden. You know what it is, Lord. I give it to you. As you continue to pray, I believe the burden will lift and that you will sometimes know when you have reached the appropriate petition. God will teach you little by little. Most of us are impatient. We want to understand immediately all that is to be known. But God does not work that way. He moves very, very slowly. Yet, he moves as rapidly as our trust will permit him. We learn swiftest by simply trusting and not seeking answers or insights. This is one of the great secrets of walking with God, but few will hear it. I have found my walk with Jesus to be truly filled with thrills, romance, and adventure. This delight is because I have not sought for gifts, insights, unusual revelations, or mighty power. I have simply tried moment by moment to love God with all my heart, exalt Jesus in all that I do, and humbly obey the Holy Spirit in everything that He tells me. I urge you to seek first, which actually means continually, the kingdom of God and His righteousness, that is simply God's will, His way, His character. God will never come short of this promise which Jesus made. In fact, he will far exceed your expectations. Taken from A Voice in the Wilderness by Lauren W. Helm, 1916 to 2006.